greetings to everyone today we are going to discuss about the derivation okay for beam column okay so why we are calling as a beam column uh, if one the column has only compressive load okay we all know that compressive load and along with the maybe the compression load with respect to its, po its position it, it is going to call it as a axial or uh, eccentric load okay so this is the column criteria so along with that if we have <clears throat> transverse load that is uh, horizontal load okay now then it is said to be beam column okay so the load may be either point load or it may be udl over the column okay so this is the criteria with respect to beam column so if the column have additional loading okay now so this is our column so in general cases we can have the column load like this okay so based on its position we are going to call it as a either axial load or eccentric load okay <clears throat> so in addition to this load if we have some transverse loads like either point load or udl okay then the column is said to be beam column okay so now we should move on to the derivation for beam column okay now here we are going to calculate the deflection then maximum bending moment and stresses okay so this thing we are going to derive right now so let us move on to the topic beam column or column subjected to lateral loads lateral loads okay then the column is said to be beam column so this is our today's topic okay so first we should move on to what is beam column so normally the column carries axial compressive loads okay if the column are also subjected to transverse load transverse load then they are known as beam column okay now the load the transverse load may be the transverse loads may be classified as first one point load point load which acts at center so this is nothing but so here i am having the column so along with the compression load p
we can have the point load which is acting at center so if it is l then it says l by 2 and l by 2 okay then second one the transfer load in the form of udl uniformly distributed load uniformly distributed load so it is entire span so this is similar to like this so this is axial axial compression load along with that the load w is acting w kN per meter so there are, these are all the two cases we are having in general the loading condition for the beam column okay so next we should move on to the derivation for this one point load which acts at center okay so now uh the strut sorry strut is subjected to axial compressive load axial compressive load or or axial thrust okay and the transverse point load at center and the transverse point load at center so this is the first case now let us move on to the diagram so here i am going to draw the column in horizontal manner okay so this is the column i am going to take it so the both ends of the column is hinged okay then the axial compressive force is acting at the column okay so here it is a and here it is b so at the mid span the load w is acting okay so because of this load w we can get the deflection like this okay now at an x distance what is the deflection that we are going to take it as a y okay so this is the general case with respect to the constant so here the length okay the length of the column is going to be taken as l and meanwhile the load w is acting at an distance of l by 2 okay so now what we should do so we have to write a statement such that the column ab has the span of length l and it have the axial compressive load p at its ends a and b and the load w point load w is acting at the center of this span okay uh, then the from at any section x from the support a the deflection is going to be calculated as y so this is the constraint so we are we have to write it after that we have to calculate the reaction ra and rb so ra is equal to w by 2 and rb is equal to w by 2 so these are all the constraints right now now let us move on to the thing okay derivation part okay so first bending moment bending moment due to load so here because of this axial compressive load the profile is concavity okay now so m is equal to minus p into 
y okay at any section next the deflection is going to be a downward okay now right now so how we are going to take it as minus okay so minus that is w by 2 into x okay so w by 2 into x so this is the equation of bending moment next to general bending moment equation okay that we are going to take it as a m is equal to d squared y by dx squared into j okay now we are going to equate these two equation so ei into d squared y by dx squared is equal to minus p into y minus uh, m sorry w by 2 into x okay now the equation is going to be e squared y by dx squared plus p into y is equal to minus w by 2 into x okay now the solution for the equation one the solution for the equation one we all know that the general equation is becomes so y is equal to c1 cos <coughs> x into root p by a plus c2 sin x into root p by e i okay minus w into x divided by 2 e i into p by e i so e i e i get cancelled okay now so the equation is becomes c1 cos x into root p by e i plus c2 into sin x into root p by e i minus w by 2 sorry w into x divided by 2 p so this is the solution for equation 1 okay so next we have to go for uh, bound uh, sorry uh, boundary conditions so boundary conditions are so boundary conditions okay so here if x equal to 0 then deflection y is equal to 0 similarly if x equal to l then deflection y is equal to 0 so these two categories okay so the boundary conditions are similarly if x equal to l by 2 then the slope is becomes 0 here so here if x equal to l by 2 then y equal to y max okay now and dy by dx slope is equal to 0 so these are all the some general boundary conditions so that we are going to write now so at x is equal to 0 then y is equal to 0 similarly at x is equal to l then y is equal to 0 okay then at x is equal to l by 2 then sorry y is equal to y max and also dy by dx is equal to 0 that is slope is equal to 0. So by substituting this we are going to get the values of c1 and c2 values. Let us move on to the substitution okay. So substitute x is equal to 0 then y is equal to 0 so that equation 2 becomes okay so y is equal to 0 c1 cos 0 plus c2 sin 0 plus sorry minus w x by 2p so if i'm going to substitute x is equal to 0 then the term entire term becomes 0 okay so 0 therefore c1 is equal to 0 okay so this is the 
first thing next i am i have to go for second boundary condition that is at x is equal to l by 2 then dy by dx is equal to 0 so for that i have to calculate the dy by dx value so y is equal to we know that c1 cos x into root under p by a plus c2 sin x into root under p by a minus w into x divided by 2p now i have to differentiate the above equation with respect to x okay so c1 minus sin into x into root under p by ea into root under p by ea similarly c2 cos x into root under p by ea into root under p by ea okay then minus w by 2p so this is the equation for dy by dx okay next what should i have to do substitute the another boundary con condition okay at x is equal to l by 2 then dy by dx is equal to 0 now i have to substitute this so 0 is equal to c1 so sin 0 the entire term becomes 0 okay and already the value of c1 is also 0 okay so plus c2 into cos x is equal to l by 2 sorry c1 value is 0 so the entire term becomes 0 okay c2 into l by 2 into root under p by ea into root under p by ea is equal to minus w by 2p so if the w by 2p becomes in this side okay w by 2p it, if it comes to left side then it becomes positive okay so w by 2p plus c2 cos l by 2 into root under p by ea into root under p by ea so this root under p by ea i need only c2 value okay so if i need c2 value what should i do the remaining terms becomes come to this side so root under ea by p is equal to c2 cos l by 2 into root under p by ea okay therefore c2 becomes okay w by 2p into root under ea by p divided by cos l by 2 into root under p by ea so 1 by cos is nothing but secant okay so now i am going to change the equation as c2 is equal to w by 2p into root under p by ea sorry ea by p root under ea by p and 1 by cos becomes secant secant l by 2 into root under p by ea so this is the value of constant c2 okay now let us move on to the c1 and c2 value in equation number uh, where first equation okay so y is equal to c1 value is 0 so entire term becomes 0 plus c2 value w by 2p into root under p by ea by p into secant l by 2 into root under p by ea c2 value okay so c2 into sin okay x into root under p by ea minus wx by 2p 
minus w into x divided by 2p okay so here y is equal to what are the common terms that we are going to take it outside okay so w by 2p to tender ea by p secant we are going to take it as a 1 by cos 1 by cos l by 2 root under p by a into sin x into root under p by a minus w into x divided by 2p so this is the equation for the y that is deflection so secant we are going to take on by cos so why i have taken like this okay now uh, that you know in the next step okay so next to what we are going to do means maximum deflection so this is equation number uh, so this is equation number 3 and this is equation number 4 and this is equation number 5 okay so next uh the deflection equation we have got in the deflection equation is displayed in equation 5 next maximum deflection we need okay maximum deflection maximum deflection so for maximum deflection x is equal to l by 2 and y is equal to y max so this is the condition okay so for maximum deflection in the equation number 5 substitute these terms okay so y is equal to y max then w by 2p into root under ea by p into 1 by cos l by 2 into root under p by ea into sin instead of x i am going to substitute as l by 2 into root under p by ea minus W into L by two divided by two p. So now this term becomes y max becomes. So sine by cos is nothing but. So here the terminologies are same. Okay now sine uh, sine L by two sine into L by two into root under p by e. Here one divided by cos into sine by cos is nothing but tan. Okay now. So now the term is going to change as. W by two p into root under e a by p into tan l by two into root under p by e a minus W l by four p. So this is the maximum deflection equation. Okay. So y max is equal to w divided by 2p into root under e a by p into tan l by 2 into p by e a minus w l by 4p. So this is the equation we are going to use to get the y max value, that is maximum deflection value. Okay. So next, what we are going to do, we have to calculate the maximum bending moment. next maximum bending moment
Mx. So in the very first equation we have wrote that m is equal to minus p into y minus w by 2 into x. Okay. So here the we have to substitute. Substitute y is equal to y max, which is nothing but this value w by 2p into root under uh, ea by p tan this value we have to substitute so w divided by 2p into root under ea by p into tan l by 2 into root under p by ea minus w l by 4p w l by or p okay and x is equal to so if it is pinned condition then the x is equal to l by 2 okay so x is equal to l by 2 so therefore the moment m becomes m max okay m max is equal to minus p into y max so w divided by 2 p into root under ea by p into tan l by 2 root under p by ea minus 4l by sorry wl by 4p okay then minus w by 2 into x instead of x we have to substitute l by 2 okay then the equation here the p is common term okay if i'm going to take it outside then it becomes get cancelled okay so minus p into 1 by p which becomes w by 2 into root under ea by p into tan l by 2 into root under p by a minus 4l by sorry l w l by 4 w l by 4 minus w l by 4 now The equation becomes pp get cancelled okay now if i'm going to multiply this minus w by 2 into root under ea by p into tan l by 2 into root under p by ea plus w l by 4 minus w l by 4 gets cancelled okay therefore m max is equal to okay what is the formula minus w by 2 into root under ea by p into tan l by 2 into root p by ea okay so this is a uh, equation for maximum bending moment and here the negative sign is due to sign convention okay so the magnitude of bending moment we are going to take it in positive okay so the negative sign is coming due to sign convention therefore the magnitude of bending moment is equal to magnitude of bending moment is equal to m max magnitude becomes positive okay so it becomes w by 2 into root under ei by p into tan l by 2 root under p by a so this is the equation is used to calculate the bending moment value 
okay so this is the equation number 6 sorry 7 okay next maximum stress maximum stress sigma max so we all know that sigma max is equal to sigma direct plus sigma bending so sigma direct becomes load by area sigma b becomes okay m by that is by using theory of simple bending formula okay m by a g is equal to sigma by y therefore sigma is equal to m into y by i okay so m into y by i so i we are going to take it as a k square correct so i we are going to take it as a k square and here in this equation we are going to take it as m is equal to m max since we need maximum bending stress okay and k is equal to radius of aeration okay substitute these terminologies therefore sigma b is equal to m max so m max we are going to take it as w by t into root under ea by p into tan l by 2 into root under p by ea so w max value into y instead of i we are going to take it as a ak square and here y is equal to y critical that is critical depth if the section is going to be changed okay now then uh, we have to calculate the y critical okay now uh, so distance of extreme layer from compression from in compression from neutral axis okay so that we have to take it into yc into yc so this is nothing but sigma b value okay are we all know that sigma i direct stress is equal to p by a so by the combination of sigma max is equal to p by a plus w by 2 into root under ea by p into tan l by 2 into root under p by ea okay into y c by a k square so this is the equation of maximum bending stress so this is equation number 8 okay so these are all the general equation which we are going to use in the beam column that is the beam column is subjected to lateral loads okay so those formulas are so first of all the y max the equation of y becomes w by p into root under ea by p Into one by cos that is R is secant L by two into root P by E I into sine X into root under P by E I minus W X by two P. Okay now next to that for Y max we have to calculate. So for Y max the X value is equal to L by two and Y is equal to Y max. So that we are getting the answer as W by two P into root under E I by P into sine by cos becomes tan into L by two root under P by E I minus W into L by Two. Okay, so W L by four P. So the equation number six becomes to calculate the maximum deflection. Next, maximum bending moment M max. So the equation is W by two into root under E A by P into tan L by two into root under P by E A. This is equation number seven. So next, in order to get the bending stress equation, sigma max. Okay, so we all know that sigma max becomes direct stress plus bending stress. Okay. 
So the direct stress value is nothing but P by A and bending stress is nothing but M by Y into I. So I becomes A K squared. Okay. So by substituting this, we are going to get the equation like this: P by A plus W by two into root under E I by P into tan L by two into root under P by E I into Y C by A K squared. So the equation number is eight is going to use to calculate the maximum stress.